What's up guys, Stark here. In today's character spotlight, we're going to be taking a look at Tamamo Cat. I'm gonna throw her pictures on the screen right now. Uh, now she does have some interesting artwork. Um, so each time you ascend her, she loses more and more clothes, which if you know anything about fate, uh, is pretty standard. The higher the ascension, the more plot you get. Overall though, I'm not a huge fan of her character design or her artwork at all but to each their own. So she is a Berserker class. Um, now I do need to correct something I said in a previous video. They actually deal 50% more damage to all classes except shielders, and they will take double damage from all classes as well, except for shielders and Berserkers. So I just wanted to do a little correction there. I think I got it right this time. Hopefully I said it right this time. Okay, so her max stats here at level 80 are gonna be 9,026 attack and 11,458 HP. So she's got some pretty good stats there. Nothing too high, nothing too low. It's not exactly balanced though, she is more on the HP side. Uh, it's just a little weird because she's a Berserker class. But hey, what can you do? They all can't be Hercules levels. So moving on here to her skills. Her first skill is going to be Monstrous Strength B, which will increase her attack for two turns. And it's a pretty moderate increase. 10% at level 1, 30% at level 10. It's pretty good. You always like those self buff attacks. It is only for her though, so that's kind of a drawback. But hey, what can you do? Second skill is going to be Curse E, which has a low chance to decrease charge by one of one enemy. It says low chance, but it's actually like 40% at level 1, 60% at level 10. Wouldn't exactly call that a low chance. I'd say that's like a moderate chance. Um. And they really need to work on their terminology here for what's good, what's bad, because some of their like their greatly increased HP is like 500, and it's weird. Anyway, so it's a 40% chance level one. Like I said, 60% level 10. It's pretty nice. Um, you know, you're probably gonna get it off 50% of the time. So it's not bad. It's pretty good. Wish it did a little bit more. Maybe in the future, look at like an interlude quest or a strength quest that'll give it a little bit something extra because. Her skills are kind of bland. They do one thing, that's it. Having said that, her third skill is called Morph B, which, as usual, does one thing, increases her defense for three turns. That's it. That's it. She's very boring. One thing, one. It's not like a one trick pony or bear in this situation, but each of her skills do one thing, and that's it. None of them do anything else. It's kind of weird. I don't know. Her Noble Phantasm does kind of do a little bit more, but. We'll get to that later. So I'm going to throw up her ascension and her skill enhancement materials on the screen. So she needs quite a bit to ascend her all the way up to the top. She needs a bunch of claws, the homunculus babies. It's not actually that weird for me to say. I know a lot of people commented in the previous video with like alternate suggestions to the names. I just thought it was a weird name to call an item. Like it's a baby homunculus like in like a flask thing. It's just really weird. I have no problem saying the name though, so don't get me wrong there. And then you do need some demon hearts and a bunch of monumented pieces, as usual. Her skill enhancements are much the same. You need a bunch of homunculus babies. You need some crystals, demon hearts. It's just a lot of stuff. Like, I don't know. Like, for what she is and what she does, does not feel like it's worth it to put this much effort into leveling up a character. Especially at this stage in the game when these items are more difficult to come by. I don't have her, so it's not my problem. Moving on here to her craft essence. It's going to unlock the cat apron craft essence, which will increase max HP of all allies by 2,000 while on the field. And this is very good. I quite enjoy this craft essence. It's very nice. You can buff up your HP, and it's not like a 500 or 200 thing. It's a full 2,000 while on the field of all allies, which is really nice. So if you can max her out and you can get this going, definitely see some play. If only she had better skills, maybe she'd be really useful. I'm really critical of this character. I'm just like thinking about it. I'm talking a lot of crap on her. I don't mean to, but I just don't like her. Moving on to her command cards and her noble phantasm. She is a berserker, so she will have three busters, one quick and one arts. 
it's pretty standard for berserkers that I've seen so far and her noble phantasm is quick I still don't understand why they do this but it is a quick noble phantasm that will deal heavy damage to all enemies restore HP each turn for three turns and inflict stun on herself for two turns which is actually one turn there you go um at least it does more than one thing but it does have the drawback of stunning herself which is really stupid really annoying but you can combo it with a debuffer and get rid of that and then you have no problems you can also do an interlude quest to power this up it doesn't give her any more effects it just raises the stats of the stuff she already has but 3000 HP heal on her noble phantasm is pretty nice especially for berserkers healing is always good but just comboing her with a support character that can remove debuffs you only really have one more slot on your team for something really good so I don't know I mean I'm sure there's teams there's always teams for everything but I'm not huge on this character not I mean if I get her I'll unlock you know all her skills I'll level her up all that stuff I'm not really gonna be pulling for her or anything like that I have no reason at this point in time to want her so for her craft essences that you could use on her uh, verdant sound of destruction is always nice um, limit zero over is nice again kaleidoscope amazing always gonna use it I'm probably just gonna uh, maybe I shouldn't stop saying it but they're all really good um, not too much else here you can use for her you could also potentially throw in like quick because a noble phantasm is quick so like grander or imaginary around I don't know if I necessarily do that, but if you want to center it around using her Noble Phantasm, then I could definitely see that going. But, you know, that's going to wrap up this uh, character spotlight for the Tamamo Cat. I'm still probably pronouncing her name wrong, but probably going to be the last time I say it in this video. Uh, anyway, tomorrow I will be doing um, Chevalier, Chevalier Deon. Again, pronunciation is terrible. Please don't kill me. Um, I believe he is, yes, it's a guy. I didn't realize that until I looked up information on them. But I'll be doing him tomorrow. I think he's the last four-star servant that I haven't covered yet. Let me know in the comments if I actually, if I missed one so I could go ahead and make a video for that character. Uh, so after that, I'll be doing three stars, two stars, one stars. Um, in no particular order, I'm just going to pick characters that I think are good characters that I could actually find thumbnails for would be awesome too and make videos for those I do have a couple in mind I'm not gonna give them away until tomorrow I'll announce what I'm doing but um yeah that's, that's pretty much it I'm just gonna leave you guys with her noble phantasm here and I'll see you guys tomorrow <laughs> <laughs>